I'm mad at you. Yeah, you, right there. I'm mad at you. The, 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 the collector, the Transformers collector that said that Studio Series Ratchet was bad and not worth your time. Because I put off getting Studio Series Ratchet because I was like, well, I've, I've got, you know, the original Voyager one, and I've got this Dark of the Moon one, and a lot of people keep saying the Studio Series is just like the Dark of the Moon, but not as good. No! No, you, you were wrong. You were wrong. And I knew that you were wrong, and for years and years I've been seeing people that Studio Series Ratchet, and it eats me up because I was like, oh man, I shouldn't have listened to him. I should have gotten it because it looks so good. And I finally got it. I finally got it. Retail price. I'm very happy with it. I did have to modify one little thing about him, and it's something that you might not notice, but Eagle Eyed viewers that are familiar with the original version of Ratchet might be like, hmm, yours is looking a little different. I'll, I'll get into it. But yeah, I've got the original Voyager, and I've got the new, st new Studio Series. It's what Studio Series 04. And we're already on, like, Studio Series over 100. So, yeah, this one was a little while ago. Uh, so, new. But still, uh, it's the newer Ratchet, and it's Deluxe Class. And this is a very, very big Voyager class. Uh, even back then, for a Voyager, this Ratchet was huge. Uh, almost teetering on Ultra Class. This Ratchet was pretty much, like, bigger than the Voyager Optimus that came out in the same line. This Ratchet's enormous. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I always thought it kind of scaled best if you had like Leader Optimus and Leader Ironhide, this Voyager Ratchet, and then like Hunt for the Decepticons Bumblebee. I felt like that was a really good scale. That's why I kept this Ratchet. And that's why I'm still going to keep this Ratchet because I still very much like it. However, with my collection like going more and more the way of Studio Series, you know, I wanted this Ratchet and I really like it. And I do want to say. That this isn't just going to be a two-way old versus new. Oh no, we actually are going to do a three-way one. Because I do really want to compare the Studio Series Ratchet to the Dark of the Moon version. Now granted, this is a Studio Series Ratchet based on the first movie. And this is the Dark of the Moon Ratchet. Uh, so there are some differences to the design. Uh, which also warrant me wanting to keep this one too. So, I'll have quite a few Ratchets in my collection, but you know what? It's Ratchet. And I actually want another one, too. I want to get the Revenge of the Fallen mold, but I want to get the white and red Rescue Ratchet repaint, which is a little hard to get. That was in Hunt for the Decepticons. So, fingers crossed I can get that at some point. But, I've rambled on long enough. Let's get into this Ultimate Ratchet comparison. Uh, the best boy in all of the movies. Medical boy. Good boy. Green boy. Dead boy, unfortunately, rest in peace. Uh, oh, oh man, poor lockdown. He, uh, yeah, lockdown got to him, man. Oh, that's not good. Okay, I've rambled on long enough. Let us uh, get the elephant out of the room. Uh, I say as I pick up the the dark of the moon. I don't know why. Uh, we'll just kind of have him in the back because the main comparison is between these. Elephant in the room. This is a huge Voyager. This is a deluxe. Uh, I think Deluxe scales better with a lot of other figures nowadays, and the Voyager is just huge and kind of has its own weird scale. But still, the Voyager is cool. It's a cool toy. Uh, but this one I, I like a lot more. So let's kind of put him back there, too, because we're going to talk about the Voyager for a minute. And yeah, this guy's huge. It's unnecessarily huge. But it's still a fun figure. I really do like it. Uh, he's got some things kind of hanging off of him, like on his on his shoulders. He's got the windshield to just kind of uh, interestingly like halved on his back. I like the placement of the wheels on the robot, even though they're not super accurate. Studio Series definitely nailed it. And unfortunately, this will be a trend among Ratchet toys. They have no idea what to do with this kind of like roll bar thing that's on the top of the ambulance. Uh, this one decided to make it some claw weapon where you open it up and snap it shut. It'd be nice if you could like open it up with that same tab, but it's not really possible because it like tabs together once you shut it. It's it's kind of awkward to move it, but I mean you can. But once you shut it tight, it kind of more often than not actually tabs it together. I say is it's no longer tabbing it together. How uh, there we go, tabbed it right there. So yeah, they kind of used it as like a claw weird shield thing. Not a very useful shield, but yeah, that's what they did. And if you want to store it on the robot mode. Too bad. Uh, it's a weapon. That is what this is. So, if you are looking for this ratchet, like, secondhand, loose, 
be very mindful this could be missing. Uh, it's, it's a very crucial element of the vehicle mode, in my opinion. So if you don't have this, then that's kind of poopy. Hope, hopefully yours can have this. But we're going to set that off to the side because when it comes to the toy itself, you know, it's just a weapon. It doesn't really have anywhere to go on the robot. Uh, speaking of the robot, he's very big and very chunky. Uh, but he's very cool. He's got a couple of tricks up his sleeve, uh, quite literally. The main one, pretty much the only one, you can flip in the hand, then flip out what I'm assuming is kind of like a rescue hatchet for Ratchet. Uh, <laughs> almost looks like a butterfly on his hand, honestly. Especially since you can kind of flutter it a little bit. Yeah, I've never really seen it as a very convincing like tool of medical weaponry or whatever. It just looks like a butterfly on his hand. But still, it's it's something he's got going on, you know, if you want, you could you could do that. But let's just get that back tucked in, because that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, the other hand doesn't really have a similar gimmick. Uh, it pretty much just exists for the sake of existing. Uh, at least I don't think it has a gimmick. I think the main thing is that it holds the, holds the weapon. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's no gimmick to be found. It's been so long since I played with this guy, you know, just needed to double check. Leave me alone, just had to double check. Uh, I really like the proportion. He's very big and very beefy, but honestly, you know, comparing it to a more faithful interpretation, it's a little too big, a little too beefy, but I, I still enjoy it. I still enjoy it. It's a very 2007 big chunky robot man, and I, I enjoy that. Uh, the sculpt's very nice. I like the head sculpt. You know, he's got that silver kind of mud and chop look. I like it. I like it. He's got the, you know, he's got the grill in the front. Uh, he's got the hip wheels, which are pretty accurate. His legs, though, are a little awkward because he has these big panels on the back. And the knees kind of clash with those. And uh, he's this big, chunky robot man. Uh, it is kind of cool, though, his automorph. Uh, but we'll get into that with the transformation. But still, like, if you want to use this as, like, an ankle joint, it kind of... Kind of has a bit of that automorph feature you see where the knee pad moves and then a part of the, the leg kind of spreads out. I always like the automorph features on old 2007 toys. Yeah, you can see his legs, they move. No articulation at the waist. Head swivels, shoulders swivel, in and out, elbow joint, nothing really at the wrist. You can see his articulation. You can see what he's got going on. He's a big, beefy 2007 Voyager robot man. And I can, I can appreciate that. I can respect that. So that's his robot mode. So let's get him out of the way. And let's talk about the Dark of the Moon one. Because this was my very first Ratchet. Because I started collecting around Dark of the Moon. I love his mech tech weapon. It is actually my favorite deluxe mech tech weapon. I adore this weapon. I think it works really, really well. Basically how it works, when you push this, it kind of springs this out. But those gears right there uh, run across, because you can see if you do it slowly, it's not really going to move much. But there's a gear on the inside that messes with that gear right there, and it causes it not only to spring out, but also to spin. So this is my personal favorite mech tech weapon, because it also looks like a pretty cool gun with like an awesome big old magazine uh, like drum. So it's a really cool looking weapon, really do like it. Figure itself... I, I, I do like it. I do like it, but I feel like it has issues that are fixed in a later version. Uh, he's got very loosey-goosey shoulders. Uh, that's one thing. They're kind of loosey-goosey. The wheels are also just kind of out in the open, and he doesn't have, like, the headlights on the wheels like, you know, other versions do. Uh, his legs are also always slightly bent. He's always kind of got a slight bend to the legs. You can never fully straighten them. Now, granted, they look straight enough, but especially looking at him head-on, you can tell his legs are kind of at a curve. Uh, his back. His backpack is a thing. Again, ratchets don't really know what to do with the roll cage kind of thing at the top. So this guy just kind of folds it up. You can't have it flush against his back, and it has less out, but it does kind of extend down. And he's, you know, you can start seeing it between the legs. Which, personally, I kind of keep him like this, because when it comes to my shelf space, you know, I value, you know, space on my shelf. So having it like this. You know, it's like a whole other whole other size robot that he's taken up space back there. So at least that gets rid of some of it. So I personally have it like that. The head sculpt I've never been the biggest fan of. Because I feel like they kind of, I don't know, it, 
it seems less dense, if that makes any sense. The sculpt has less density to it, and it looks almost tendril-like. It's hard to describe. I don't know. He also has, like, these big, like, guards on the side of his head that I don't really feel like is super noticeable with many ratchet designs. But still, you know, it's it's not a bad head sculpt. Uh, his articulation is pretty good. You know, swivel at the head. Uh, ball joints at the shoulder. A bit of a hinge, too. Uh, he does have, like, a swivel at the bicep and kind of a double hinge, but it's mostly for transformation. A uh, bit of a tiny little hinge at the wrist. Nothing at the waist. Ball joints at the hips. Technically a double hinge at the knee for transformation, but it pretty much gets you 90 degrees. You can see that is one fold away from being a chunk of the vehicle, too. And his ankles are nicely on a hinge and a ball joint, so I've always liked his ankle articulation. So I really do like the Dark of the Moon Ratchet. I think it's really nice, but it had a few issues that I feel like were almost entirely revised and refined with the Studio Series. This one is by far my favorite Ratchet. And, yes, it does have a couple issues, namely, yet again, it doesn't know what to do with the whole, like, roll cage top thing. So, kinda, you know, but, like, the rest of the back compact's really nice, but that just kinda sticks down. I kinda wish they would've figured out a way to just have an extra hinge to fold it or something. But, I can forgive it. You can, again, have it more flat, if you prefer that method. But I actually think in this in this regard, it looks best like that. Still, you know, you can kind of see it dangling, but it's kind of one of those instances of what can you do? Even the Masterpiece had issues with dealing with that. So, eagle-eyed and knowledgeable uh, Transformers collectors will notice that I did customize mine just ever so slightly. So the Dark of the Moon and the Autobot 5-pack version uh, fully painted the head, where he has, like, the silver brows and, like, the silver mudden chops. But the original Studio Series did not. It was just silver on the nose and the mouth, and that was pretty much it. Here's a picture uh, side by side so you can see how it originally looked. Uh, but in my instance, I had to fix it. Just a little bit of silver Sharpie, and you're on your way. In my opinion, uh, fixing this and like fully painting the head makes a world of difference. Because that was actually a large detractor for me not getting this guy when it came out all the way back in, like, what, 2019, 2018? I think it was 2018. Oh, my gosh. Is what, didn't this line run with Power of the Primes at first? I think it was 2018. I think so. That's wild. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, all the way when this guy came out nearly five years ago, I, I passed on it. Because everyone was saying, oh, it's so similar to the Dark of the Moon. And they were like, oh, it doesn't have the full face paint. And I listened to them. But a little bit of Silver Sharpie and just going ahead and buying it. Yeah, this thing's great. So, in my opinion, I feel like it decently fixes the back kibble issue. I, th I think that is a pretty decent solution. Could have been a little better if that wasn't there. But what can you do? I think the shoulders look really nice. Now that you have the headlights there and the, sh and the wheels are facing backwards, I think that looks really good. Uh, the head, especially if you fully paint it, that is by far the best ratchet head sculpt we have at Deluxe Class. That is a really good head sculpt. I really love the look at that. Uh, the arms, I feel like, just look better in general. Sure, they probably could have used a little bit more paint, but I just prefer the, the whole shape and everything. The legs, too. They don't look slightly bent anymore. Because, see, the Dark of the Moon always kind of looked like this. But now, they're straight. The legs are straight, even though they do transform very similarly to the Dark of the Moon. The feet are so much bigger, too. And I think that silver paint really helps the feet. I always loved Ratchet's foot design. As weird of a comment as that is, I've always loved his foot design. And his weapon is a more movie-accurate version of the Buzzsaw, because it just kind of was on his arm. Uh, and it's very nicely painted, all silver. Looks really nice. Personally, I think they should have taken the budget for the Buzzsaw... They should have just casted that in gray plastic and, you know, had that just unpainted and put more silver paint on the head and the arms. Personally, that's what I think they should have done. But, I, you know, it still looks nice. And, again, you know, just a little bit of silver Sharpie, especially for the head. It's no big deal. It's not like it's just going to rub off either. It holds pretty well. So his articulation, he's got a swivel at the head. He's got 
uh, a ball joint at the shoulders, as well as kind of a hinge, too, for the transformation. So that kind of helps with certain poses. You do have to keep in mind, though, if you do move that hinge, this is going to come undone. One thing, though, that does tab in very nice, unlike the Dark of the Moon, which just kind of, you know, sits there. Just kind of sits in that position, and it's easy to kind of fold it out. It actually tabs in for the Studio Series. Also for the Studio Series, if I can get him standing. Oh my goodness, please, just, just lean. There we go. Uh, he, additionally, um, does still does not have a waist rotation. Uh, but he also has the double elbow, which I feel like works a little bit more. I was starting to say additionally, but I don't really know what additional thing he really has going on when it comes to the articulation. What was I going to say? Uh, I guess he has way more leg movement, because you get a lot of range out of that. Thigh swivel. Uh, his knee bend, I feel like, is a little bit more successful. I think that looks nice. Uh, and he also has the hinge and ball joint at the at the ankle. So my statement of additionally doesn't really hold much merit. It just makes better use of what he has going on. Uh, so yeah, just ignore that word. You know, I could have just edited it out, but it's funnier for me to like stumble and explain my weird English uh, usage of words. Okay. I've gone over the robot modes. I think the clear winner here is the Studio Series. I really enjoy it. If you can get your hands on that or the Autobot 5-pack version or the Dark of the Moon one, which apparently the Dark of the Moon repaint is uh, pretty rare, uh, which is odd <laughs> and kind of funny. You know, I really recommend that one. So let's transform them. I've not transformed this one in so long, so you're going to have to forgive me if I am a little, a little rusty on it. I haven't had this figure since 2007 but kind of feels like I have. So all the Ratchet figures kind of wanted to replicate the movement in the movie where he kind of does that cool rotate -y thing. Uh, the main way that the original Voyager did was by not doing that. Uh, <laughs> basically, I mean, it kind of uncurls and everything, but it doesn't really replicate the rotation at all because it's basically just the upside down. So, I mean, in some ways, it kind of does. I mean, you can rotate the head to hide that a little bit better. But I feel like this one fails at replicating that the most out of all of them. Uh, the arms, I think those just kind of tuck in right up there, right? I, I reckon so. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going with that for now. That's that's where the arms go. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're rolling with that. Yeah, kind of like how I established earlier, it has a lot of, you know, early, mid-2000s energy to the transformation, and I really enjoy that. Uh, it's just big and clunky, and it just gets the job done, honestly. Uh, this is one figure out of the original 2007 movie line that I probably see the most of on the secondary market. Uh, it's just one that kind of lingers a lot, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, you know, got this as kids, and... You know, they, they're selling it on or something, and more often than not, you know, it's not gonna have the not gonna have the roll cage thing. But still, you know, it's really pretty quick and easy to just piece together. And once you do, I mean, there's there's your ratchet. There he is. Uh, you do have to get those little panels up. You can see it's definitely looking pretty incomplete without that on the top. However, Unlike some toys where the accessory, like, is a big chunk of the alt mode, this is totally serviceable without it. However, you know, tabbing this on, and be mindful of these tabs, by the way, one of mine's actually broken. You know, tabbing this on, it really does help the look of the alt mode. It really does. In my opinion, you need it. But in some cases, like if you're just a kid playing with your big green, or in some cases if you have rescue ratchet, you know, white and red ambulance, you don't really need it. You know, it's not a necessity. It's still a very cool alt mode, though. Very nice and chunky. You definitely want to turn that head around because you'll just see it at the bottom. Uh, still, though, really cool alt mode. Rolls really well. Very fun, chunky toy. Really love that one. And this is going to be a bit of a, you know, peat and repeat. Because the Dark of the Moon and Studio Series transformations are very, very similar. I've transformed the Dark of the Moon one so many times. Uh, it's such an awesome figure. Again, you do want to rotate that head because you're just going to see it poking out. And this one actually does replicate the rotation from the movie. Because you spin that around. And I think that's really cool. I think it's a really cool step. This one's really simple. I really enjoy it. Uh, you just kind of get the foot... I think you have to rotate the foot. Yeah, rotate the foot. 
and flip that panel in. And one cool thing about this panel too, in the vehicle mode, if you still want the weapon, you can leave this panel out and it's got that tab so you can have the weapon. I'll show you. I'll show you when I have it transformed. But the main thing you kind of got to struggle with is getting that tabbed in and getting this big old back panel all lined up. It's not super difficult, but it is probably the main struggle because you can see that wants to untab, like it wants to untab from the hinge. And keep this in mind too, if you're looking for this figure secondhand, uh, you might be missing that back panel because that's just held on with that little clip hinge and that comes off pretty easily. With this, I've always found, and this also works for the Studio Series, the easiest way to get that in is to actually hinge this just a little bit so you can get it in the little like grill guard or whatever. You can tell I'm not very <laughs> not very good with like technical names for vehicles, especially with all this weird black guarding. I don't know. You can see pretty simple transformation. And if you leave that out, you can plug in the mech tech weapon and you can still use it. I think it's pretty neat. And you can fold that back in. You can also plug it in up top if you want, if you want it like angled. It's actually kind of cool. You could have it angled down and like, you know, saw on it pursuing vehicles. Love this alt mode. Love it, love it, love it. I love the uh, the deco, search and rescue. I love the white that he had in Dark of the Moon. I personally prefer the Dark of the Moon look more to the 2007 look. But, you know, for like my Studio Series Ratchet, I wanted the 2007. So I'll definitely keep this in my collection. You know, this will be my Dark of the Moon Ratchet because I think it's pretty serviceable. And, again, rolls pretty well, which is something you don't really see on too many toys. So you can see, look at that size difference. You know, typically between Deluxe and Voyager, this kind of size and heft difference is not something you often see. That's kind of crazy. Only about four years apart on those. It's crazy. Only four years apart on these. And then this one came out like seven or so years after this. Oof, wild. Okay. So we'll take this weapon off. On there pretty tight. You can see it's molded in black. I uh, kind of wish it was molded in gray and, you know, not painted, like I said. But yeah, like I said, uh, like I said, like I said, said, like I said, <laughs> a bit of a repeat on this transformation. It's very similar. This time, though, you do rotate these wheels. And I would still rotate the head as well. Otherwise, it's just going to be poking out. And then, again, pop that up. Give that a little spinny spin. Honestly, this is a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because they saw how successful the Dark of the Moon one was. And they're like, yeah, let's just roll with that. Uh, this time, you know, this whole assembly is a little more firm. Uh, it can still pop off. I wouldn't really recommend doing it, but you can still pop that off and still be wary if you're getting this second hand that has all the, the back elements. This time, though, the feet uh, fold in like this. So that's one difference you have to keep in mind. The feet are going to fold in like that because that hole right there is going to be enough space for that hinge. But you tab this into the foot, and that kind of connects all that. It doesn't have the same purpose of, you know, having a peg if you want to keep that out. It is a little, you know, looser in this department because that doesn't really tab into the body like it does on the Dark of the Moon. Instead, you just bring this down and fit it all in. And if you're lucky, like I was just now, it fits in very smooth. And then same instance where you want to give that a little bit of a bend to get that fed in and almost there just kind of got to squeeze everything into place get that tabbed in tabbed a little squeeze and then you do want to tab this in up here tabs in right at the top which is a little tricky you can see it's kind of a bit of a hook tab if you can see that right there so you kind of want to push it forward and then tab it and tab it in at the top. And unfortunately on mine, this one doesn't really want to go in too securely. I mean it kind of goes in, but you can see it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a angle. There we go. Good enough. Good enough. Here's the studio series ratchet in his ambulance mode. And again, looks really nice. You can see for being a larger robot, it's about the same size vehicle, maybe ever so slightly smaller than the Dark of the Moon. But still, uh, really like him. Really do like them. Wish that was painted black on this, though, because it's black on the Dark of the Moon and on the 2007. 
But hey, it was Studio Series just at the, at the start. I can understand some cuts. They weren't really sure what the budget was going to be like, I guess, for the whole line moving forward. Love the red deco. Looks nice. I love the, the blue. That is something that the Dark of the Moon doesn't really have. It has a little bit up there. It's not blue, though. And this has silver. But I think the blue, really. Because I mean, there's more of a blue in the movie. I think the Studio Series for the alt mode... Maybe not the winner in the alt mode, just because I love the size and heft and rollability of this one. But overall, man, in the alt mode, it's it's a hard pick for the best. It really is. I like all three. I really do. And all three definitely have a place in my collection. But this will definitely be like my main shelf ratchet. That is, this is my ratchet right here. Dark of the Moon will serve its purpose for, you know, for a Dark of the Moon display or something. And, uh, yeah, this is just a classic, iconic 2007 movie toy. I have heard many, many requests for an old versus new on Ironhide. Depending on how well this video does will depend on if I go back and get to 2007 Ironhide just to make an old versus new. Because I don't really have a desire to get that Ironhide. And I'm kind of at a point now where it's like, well, I've got Optimus, I've got Jazz, I've got Bumblebee, I've got Ratchet. I should probably get the original 2007 Ironhide. So, comment below. Let me know if you want to see Ironhide. I'll do it if it gets enough love and support. Alrighty, though. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. It took me way too long to get this Studio Series Ratchet, but I'm very, very glad that I did. Alrighty, guys. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. Special shout-out to the channel members as well. Thank you all so much for the continued support. And there we go. Have a great one, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.